Today in this video, I'm going to show you two little tricks that make a really big difference when you use them in your work. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to learn these tricks. Now today we're going to be looking at a really fantastic illustrator and artist. I've known him for a while on Deviant Arts. Then he was known as Hamster Fly. I don't know if he still goes by that name, but his actual name is Victor Titov and he has a fantastic Instagram page. If you just go through his Instagram page, you'll see really amazing work, very simplified when you take a look at some of his warm ups. He uses color in an insane way. He really understands how to paint. And if you look at all his work, he has really amazing approach to how he makes his warm ups. And I think these are just really really quick sketches warm ups he just does before he uh goes into his day and makes uh, images or starts working so we're going to look at some of his images and see what he does in them and how you can apply this tip to really bring out the best in your image so i've taken this image from his instagram page i actually reached out to him yesterday and asked him if it was cool for me to take this image from his instagram and make a video today and he said fine he said yes so that's why i'm making this video and i think some of you should actually reach out to people before you just download their work from instagram and start coloring it or painting it and using some of the techniques you're learning on my videos i feel like to just it will make you a better person when you reach out to someone and ask for their work so do that now right now when you come into this image there are two things we need to pay attention to and i'm going to list them now so let me just reduce the size of my brush so one is this and the second is this now this is a lost edge and this is an ambient occlusion now these are the only two things we need to take into into consideration in this image and these warm-ups that he does these are the only two things we need to take into consideration in making these images like this now he's using a grayscale technique he already knows how to use color but this technique is really quick and fast I've done a tutorial on using grayscale and how to bring it up to color, but you can also do this. This is exactly the same thing I'm doing in my own video. He's just doing the same thing with kind of a different lighting setup, but still your later on when you want to apply colors, you're going to use a multiply layer. But why these two things come into play is because when you're using ambient occlusions, they're just going to make your image your renders look more solid there's going to there is going to give more form to your render so what an ambient occlusion is it is the darkest part of the image where lights can hit now he you can see his light source is coming up from the top and there's no way that this light source is going to hit this right here underneath the cloak and all these places so that is where the ambient occlusion is now every other part of the image where he has elements that are touching the character's body uh planes that are meeting eyes cloaks these heads here all those places are going to create a little soft shadow underneath them because they're touching other objects they're touching other places so that shadow that is under there is called an ambient occlusion and light cannot hit that shadow so you want to implement this shadow into your work so if you're doing something like this and i'll just make a really quick um really quick shape here so say we have this shape like a bean a little small bean and i'm going to pretty much do the same thing i'm going to use the same technique he's using here and whoops we just fill it with um black and then make this say 30 percent and then i'll just erase some parts of it so same same light source from the top and that all right so as you can see it's just really a little shape i've made now if this is a plane here i'm going to indicate that by using 
an ambient occlusion because i can tell that this form continues this way and it's all it's touching this other part so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create another layer reduce the opacity to 32 not 32 30 and then i'm going to select this place right here where the two planes are meeting and then i'm going to paint with a soft brush into this place now this is the ambient occlusion because that is where these two planes are that's where they're meeting that's the meeting point so this is what you want to do and then over here where the the shape is also touching the ground you want to paint a little darker too because it's also going to cause a shadow there now that is also another ambient occlusion so you want to think about you just really want to think about where all these planes are where are they touching where do they meet and that is where you're going to want to put your ambient occlusion so it will just make the form read and you can just feel like okay this thing is actually three-dimensional instead of just having it like this where it's just two planes i know cartoons do this a lot but i feel like you can elevate your work by just using ambient occlusions now lost edges on the other hand are where you have this hard edge over here you have this hard edge so this is a hard edge now it's because this place is causing a cast shadow and this other place even though it's causing a cast shadow too there's a, there's a shadow here but this plane is turning away from the light source it's going in this direction so it's going to it's not going to have a hard edge you can make it a hard edge but this will read much more if you have this soft lost edge where the shadow is transitioning you can tell that it's changing plane so if this was a square if this object was a square you're going to have definitely a hard cut right here but because this is not a square this object that this cloak she's wearing it has texture so it's going to have a transition you're not just going to make it square it's going to have a transition so the shadows are going to transition it's going to be soft and then when you have all this soft uh shadows transitioning right here in the middle is going to be the darkest part and this part is going to be called it's known as the terminator because it's the darkest part that's separating where the light is hitting and the rest of the shadow so you can see he does the same thing here as well he has a terminator there he has a terminator here now you he has a little bit of it here too so you want to keep this in mind and if we go back to our little figure here taking keeping that in mind you can see this is our hard cut and now we're going to make our soft shadows right here so we're going to make this plane softer because it's transitioning do the same with our with that and then we we'll do the same thing with this plane over here too so you just want to keep in mind uh the forms you are rendering and how they're turning in 3d space so you can see how that looks now and what i'll do is because I've made this darker I have to make I've made this uh, smooth I have to do the same thing with the um, ambient occlusion shadow so those have those have to be smooth as well and I'll just use black and I'll just paint in that so you can tell this just makes the form read it makes the form read better and you can tell the the shape the plane that this is you can tell that this is round this is softer and then there's a hard cut here which is indicating kind of um it's differentiating that it's showing you that there's a cast shadow here but this plane that's going downward because it's curved it's going to have the transition so this is really just uh playing with contrast for shadows you're losing some edges and leaving some edges hard and 
you really just want to use this all the time when you're making your work and then you can even just go in and add a couple of bounce lights here and there if you want to really push this some more so i'll just use white and i'll just paint a little bit of bounce light coming in from the ground onto these planes and you can see how the form just it's just beginning to feel like a potato it's, it's beginning to feel like something that is actually alive so you can see how that form is reading and you can see it's just the same principle that he's using in his images so really you guys will have to be doing this in your work you'll see a big difference if you start thinking about it like this just how i broke it down if you start thinking about your work this way you're going to make some really good improvements in your images so try these techniques try this out and you can go back and tag us tag him tag me in the image if you upload it on instagram and let's see let's see what you guys are doing with these tips that we're sharing on my youtube channel and everywhere else so yeah if you learned something from this video please leave it a thumbs up share it with a friend so everyone can improve with their art and leave a comment down below what you think what you like what you want to see me draw next create next just leave a comment down below and just leave a comment down below if you like my hat if you think my matching colors my my colors are i'm i'm doing some color contrast with the dress and see it's a red shirt with a blue hat so yeah just tell me what you think in the comment section and i'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video mm -hmm. yeah peace our supporters thank you for letting me do what i do and if you love to support my work and my channel you could go down and click the link in the description to subscribe to my patreon page and with all that being said i will see you in the next video peace being cute i know people have not seen my face in a while on this channel but um here it is uh, it's nice have it's cute because I'm feeling cute today. That's why I have the cap. I have the hat on. Blue hat. Too much. A little bit of contrast in the colors. You know, blue hat. Red shirt. Just some contrast. You can't just be doing all that contrast in your work. You have to put it in your dressing too.